Hey, good afternoon. This is uh, Charles Blatchard, pastor of Bucksmont Baptist Church, uh, coming in today with uh, Sherwin Ford. Uh, he's a dear brother in Christ, a uh, financial advisor, has a heart for helping people with their finances, making sure uh, that they're stable and have the ability and resources uh, to do what God's calling them to do. And he's the regional vice president um, at Primerica Financial Services. Uh, thanks so much for being on today, Sherwin. Yeah, man. Happy to be here. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and um, so at Bucksmont Baptist Church, we want to uh, provide people with resources and content uh, so that they can thrive in life, uh, grow in, in, in every regard. And obviously, we want to be a blessing um, as well to the community. And so that's why we're having Sherwin on today to give some financial tips on, you know, how to plan, um, how to budget, and, and different things related to the various stages of life. Um, so really excited to have you on, Sherwin, and really awesome. excited to learn from you. Uh, related to financial planning, um, you know, financial advising. Um, one of the things, uh, we have uh, some young folks at the church. Uh, you know, many of us also have different young people in our lives. And uh, one of the things that I try to do with my own kids, and I know other uh, people at the church try to do, is equip their kids and even, you know, young adults on how to, how to think into the future, you know, mm -hmm. the, uh, plan for retirement and have that men mentality um, earlier on in life instead of waiting until the end because so many people have have uh, had struggles with that. So what are some advice you have for, for young adults related to financial planning and even retirement planning? Yeah, um, I mean, that's a really good question. So um, first, I think it's it's important to set the, uh, the, 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 the uh, stage. I think a lot of young people um, they, you know, they, they sort of come out of whether it's high school, college, um, and they feel to themselves, Hey, I'm super young. I have a ton of time. Um, you know, I'll leave the retirement stuff for when I'm 40, 50, I want to be able to enjoy my vacation. I want to be enjoy life a little bit. Um, and so probably the first most important thing I would say is start as soon as possible. Um, there is, um, a diagram that I'm going to, that I'm going to, uh, uh, share with you that I think will help to illustrate this point is the longer that you wait to start planning for retirement, um, the, the, the more money you'll have to actually put away. So if you, if you, if you wait to start at certain ages, I'll demonstrate that in a little bit. So that's one thing. And that's just the retirement piece. The other piece I would say is really having a good handle on the purpose of money, right? And so um, money is a tool, okay? And so in the same way that if I want to, um, you know, uh, drill a screw into a piece of wood, I wouldn't bring a hammer. It's the wrong tool, right? And so money is simply a tool to be able to help us achieve the things that we want to be able to achieve. Um, and so first things first, um, money, our money, our resources that we say belongs to us really belongs to our heavenly father. It belongs to God. And so our responsibility is to be, is to be good stewards of that. One of the things we talked about retirement, that's, that's important for us personally. Tithing is important. Um, budgeting is important. Getting out of debt is important. So I would say having a plan for all of those things will allow us to have the right mindset as we progress in our lives. And so as we get to purchasing a house or planning for our kids' education or um, planning for retirement or, you know, whatever goals that we have, if we start out the right way with the right mindset, it will then allow us to keep those disciplines as things may progress in our life. And so, um, I just want to share this, this uh, particular slide. I think it's really, really powerful. Um, I think you're able to see my screen here. Yeah, yeah. What's up? So this, in a nutshell, don't pay the high cost of waiting. Okay, if you look at someone who starts at 27 years old uh, and they're trying to accumulate a million by the time they get to 65, okay? Um, so from... from um, from 27 to 67, they're putting away 214 bucks a month, which at that age is not a, not, not a whole lot of money. You're going to be able to accumulate to that million dollars that you're 
that you're targeting. If you waited 10 years to 37 to start, um, the 214 goes to 546. You waited till 47, 1497, 57, 51, 68, and then 62. Um, 13 over 13,000. So that's just a quick illustration to make the point that starting early is extremely important as you prepare for your retirement goals. There are lots of vehicles that you can choose. You know, there are your, your uh, company 401ks, there are uh, traditional IRAs, Roth IRAs. Really, I wouldn't be so focused on the vehicle that you choose. Um, even though that's important, I would focus on the discipline of putting away, even if it's 50 bucks a month, just start doing that um, to be able to, to, to uh, help. So I would say start young, make it a priority. Um, it'll help you along the way. Yeah, that's great. Great advice, you know, especially related to budgeting, uh, you know, obviously having those different pools, understanding what money is, you know, what's the purpose of money, right? Mm -hmm. What are we supposed to do? It's a tool. It's not the mm -hmm. end be all. It's not the goal of life is not to uh, accumulate money. Correct. Uh, so you, you're not just saving for, for saving or, or for wealth, but it's, it's for purpose. And mm -hmm. also like, the, you know, that idea of, uh, tithing and getting out of debt and, and budgeting as well. Um, it, it's really important. We try to teach our kids, kids that as well with everything, you know, with the chores that they do, you know, a certain apart, a certain percentage give, 10% is give, and we have save and we have a spend uh, envelope yep. as well to, to try to teach them with that. And yeah, like you said, the earlier you put it away, uh, you can <laughs> build it up over time. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, life happens. Uh, you're a father, uh, you know, I have, I have uh, kids and me as well. Life happens and um, things change through different seasons, right? Sure. As you get older, um, uh, you have kids and then you're not just planning for yourself anymore. You're planning for them. You have kids, you have additional expenses and, and things like that. What are some uh, strategies or advice you have for for parents, perhaps with young children, you know, as they're, they're trying to plan for their kids' college and also maybe retirement or, sure. or, or life expenses like buying a house or, or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a, I mean, um, it's, it's really important that we plan effectively throughout the stages of life. Um, it's crazy how much planning we put into, let's say, a wedding. Um, and how much less planning we actually put into planning for our financial future, right? And so I would say the first thing that you want to do is make sure you have a solid foundation. And it may seem crazy when I, when, I, when I give you this example, but really life insurance is one of the most important things for a young family to have because what it does, the purpose, we talk about purpose again, the purpose of life insurance is to replace income. That's the primary purpose. And so if I bring home a certain amount of money from the income that I make, if something were to happen to me, the entire family is now in jeopardy. So life insurance sort of provides that layer of protection on the foundation of my financial house. And so I can focus on everything else, right? I can focus on paying off debt, building up that emergency fund, planning for a time. I can do all those things knowing that if something were to happen to me and I were to pass away, that there's a level of protection there. What do you Probably recommend the, for that? Is that uh, 10 years? Is that 10 years of income, I think I've heard before? Yeah, so the, the, uh, not the general rule is eight to 10 times your income. Um, but what I like to, to, to uh, do for really each family is to, is, to, is to help them come up with a very specific number with a very specific purpose. So we're not just throwing out random numbers because sometimes people have things pop up in their life where they may need a little more coverage. And some people have a lot of assets and they need a lot less coverage. And so it's not just eight to 10 times. We have to look at um, each person's situation. But, but yes, to answer your question, generally eight to 10 times. Yeah, that's a good point about, about the, the varying. Some people have higher mortgages, more debt, you know, exactly. This is, so it could be it could be a different number for different folks, for sure. So in terms of like uh, saving for your kids' college and and other things like that, are there certain vehicles you recommend? Or yep. Your strategies you recommend for? Yeah, 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 yeah. So the 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 uh, the uh, next 
the next step in that in that journey once the foundation is is that done i would say is having a a a a, a debt reduction debt elimination strategy once you get past that now you're looking at planning for retirement and, and kids college education a good vehicle that i think is probably the um probably the best for most people not saying that it is for everyone but for probably most people is what's called a 529 plan a 529 plan is a state sponsored plan that allows um, uh, really anyone, not just parents, to be able to contribute for the education of um, either themselves or a young one. And um, especially in Pennsylvania, one of the benefits that you receive from a 529 is your contributions that you make to a 529 actually allow you to reduce your gross income for Pennsylvania purposes. Gotcha. So right. And so, brand. yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's not a reduction for federal, but it is a reduction for Pennsylvania. So you're getting a 3% benefit immediately from making that contribution to the 529. Um, again, I would say in the same way as we did for the first question, it's, it's about discipline, right? And so um, even though you're planning for your kid's education, and you want to be disciplined in that way, I would say it's the same discipline, you know, even as responsibility grows and you may need to, to taper down your um, retirement contributions, I would still commit to doing something, yeah. right? Even if it's a hundred bucks a month, 150 bucks a month, it may seem really insignificant at this time, but what it allows you to do um, it's called dollar cost averaging, which is putting in a fixed amount of money every single month over a long period of time. And it allows you to buy um, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, um, sometimes when they're low, sometimes when they're high, but it, it actually benefits you long term to uh, do that. So what I would say is just continue to stay disciplined, make sure that you have that budget, make sure you have a debt elimination plan. Um, stay disciplined with the retirement contributions and please, please, please make sure that foundation is, is as solid without the foundation. It doesn't matter what you build. Um, it can be very devastating to the family. Yeah. Yeah. That's great advice. And like you said, when you, you're, you're doing it on a regular basis, when you're disciplined and doing it, it creates a habit. Um, that's correct. You don't, you don't feel the loss of that money is just mm -hmm. going in and, um, uh, you, you're not even thinking about it. You budget outside of that, right? You yep. budget everything outside of that. So yep. yeah, really good advice um, uh, related to that. Uh, at our church, we have uh, several people who are towards retirement age. And, um, you know, also, you know, the boomer generation, you know, some of them are retired and some of them are getting towards retirement. And um, even uh, uh, Gen Xers, you know, are getting up in there, which um, sure. is well. So, um, you know, when people are, are right about to retire, you know, do you have any advice for them or as they're getting closer to that retirement age, it's maybe they're empty nesters or, or things like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, the budget is huge. It is, I can't tell you how important. Most people think the budget is just for younger folks. Well, when you're planning for retirement, let's just say you're five to seven years away from retirement, the planning that you do in that period of time is setting you up for the quote unquote fixed expenses that you'll have or fixed income that you may have in retirement. So having, having um, a really good solid budget saying, hey, this is what I anticipate I'll be spending for groceries what I'll be spending for my medical costs, et cetera. That's, that's crucial because that budget is then going to be able to help you with um, how you structure your portfolio for retirement. Mm -hmm. So I would say the budget's the first thing. The second thing is make sure you have a debt elimination plan. This is sad, but it's true. I find a lot of folks in between the 50 to 60, 65, and even beyond they carry a lot of debt into retirement. Okay, credit card debt, mortgages into retirement. And so I would say if you're planning to retire, don't just focus on, okay, this is gonna be awesome, I'm gonna be able to do vacations and all that stuff, even though that's great. 
have a plan to eliminate um, debt. Um, so budget, have a debt elimination plan um, and make sure that you're structuring your portfolio in such a way that it allows you to live through retirement. Okay, a lot of folks plan for that retirement day, right? Like they plan for a wedding. And so it's like all of the effort, all the activity is for this one day. Well, guess what? There's about 20 to 25 years after that day. And so make sure that that portfolio is structured in such a way, one, that it's not too aggressive, but at the same time, it's not too conservative. Um, there, there was a study done many, many years ago of two families, both retiring with half a million dollars, um, and they were withdrawing 40000 a year. One shows a conservative um, uh, portfolio into retirement, and their money lasted about 15 to 16 years. The other family took a higher growth approach, um, and they were able to have their money last for 35 years. Mm -hmm. Pretty drastic difference. One decided to be conservative. The other said, um, you know, I just have to have a little more volatility because we're living 25 and 30 years in retirement. Okay. So, yeah. And so we need to make sure that we're planning, um, uh, you know, 20 to 25 years after retirement, I would say is, is very, very important. Yeah. Uh, I really like that you lumped in the debt uh, or mortgages with the debt elimination plan, especially as you get towards retirement as well. Uh, you know, mortgages, you know, debt. And a, a lot of uh, folks as well, they don't typically, they don't um, often lump in the mortgage with that, but especially as you come into retirement to have that money, you have to live somewhere. Mm -hmm. So to have that monthly expense over and over, uh, it, you know, it, it, it requires the amount of savings to be a lot higher. So, you know, um, that even goes for, for people, you know, in their, you know, 30s and 40s looking That's at correct. The property that you're, you're buying, is, you know, is this a long term property? What is the plan for the, the home purchase? Uh, yep. A lot of times people don't think about, um, you know, the house for a long term investment. So, yeah, if, if I could add one thing on to that, <clears throat> um, you know, a lot of folks I see um, refinancing now, fantastic time to be able to yeah. refinance. But what I, would, what I would do is I would take the age that you're at right now and I would add the term of the mortgage to that so it gives you some perspective um, on how long you're planning on paying for that mortgage because you might refinance to a 30-year mortgage. You may drop your, your monthly payment by... 150 or 200 and you're feeling really good about that. But guess what? If you're 40 and you have a 30 year mortgage, that's 70. Yeah. <laughs> right. If you're doing it at 45 and 50. Yeah. Do the, like, so I would, I would just encourage folks to make sure you do that math and, and what it may do is it may encourage you even more. Um, to take action on the debt elimination plan. I would say a part of any debt elimination plan should be the mortgage payment. Um, lumped in with everything else, student loans, no. uh, car loans, credit cards, really any, any, anything that you owe anyone else, you want to have as a part of that. Um, because what it allows you to then do when you retire, you're free to give. You're free to, um, to, to use the resources that God has blessed you with to be able to be a blessing to others. And when you are, you know, paying a mortgage payment or giving interest to someone else, that's money that isn't, isn't being used for the, for the, 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 the uh, kingdom. So. Yeah, that's a, a great thing. Uh, we, uh, um, when I was looking at my, my mortgage and I was like, wow, I'm going to be pretty old when this thing's over. So <laughs> we made that extra commitment to do that, um, extra payment per year. Yeah. Good. I think it drops from like 30 year mortgage down to like a 22 year mortgage or yep. something like that doing that Fantastic. per year. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Just, uh, always thinking in advance, man, planning and, and trying to reduce that debt. So, uh, that's great that are in retirement, maybe they haven't done the best planning going into retirement, maybe they didn't do everything right. Um, 
you know, what are, are some uh, practical tips or advice that you have for people who are in retirement? Um, you know, what should they be monitoring? What should they be doing to, to uh, you know, continue to try to stay on top of these things and even get better? Yeah, there? sure. Um, again, I'm going to go back to the budget. Um, you're going to hear me hit that over and over and over again. Um, I would say the budget is absolutely key um, because with a budget, it informs how we spend. When we decide how our money is spent, it gives us more control over those things. So even someone in retirement, having a budget is helpful. Having a will, okay, um, is extremely important. Now, a will really, that conversation should have been had um, with the very first question or the second question, right? You have a family, you have hard assets, you want to have that will because the will determines how your loved ones, if they're minors, right? Who do they go to physically? Mm -hmm. It also gives, um, you know, distribution instructions as to your, your uh, hard assets. And so, um, or sometimes even liquid assets. So having a will, having a budget, having a will, um, now there are two wills. There is a living will and a last will and testament, right? So having both of those documents, probably even a power of attorney, quite frankly, could be really helpful. Um, there's also a document that um, would be very helpful for your loved ones in the event of your passing that really lists out all of the accounts that you have, the various mm. places, the contact information, um, um, your healthcare providers, the account numbers, all that stuff. I mean, all of those things um, are really important. Now, um, having an emergency fund, even if you're putting $25 into it, having an emergency fund at that stage of life is, is a good thing because emergencies continue to pop up. So I would say, again, it starts with the way that we think about money and even someone in retirement um, can change their behavior if they change their thinking with regards to money and implement some of these little things. What I find um, with some of the clients that I have um, that are in retirement is, you know, sometimes they, they just end up spending a little more than they want to because they're at home, they're watching TV or they're on the internet and they're seeing stuff and they're like, Hey, you know what? This would be really cool for me to have. And, you know, long story short, they end up spending an extra 200 bucks that they weren't planning on for that month. And guess what? They have a credit card, they put it on the credit card and there's this slow incremental build up. So that's why I go back to the budget. Um, really it is the, it is one of the foundational pieces, regardless of your stage of life, um, having the will in place, um, you know, so that you can direct and then having that document that says, this is what I have. So if something were to happen to you, your family, your loved ones, um, you know, instead of, they will have to deal with your passing, which is, which is really difficult, but now it's like, okay, where, you know, they may end up spending six to nine months just trying to sort things out. So, yeah. You know, in sports, they talk about uh, you, you win and lose in the practice room, right? Or you win and lose at practice. And mm -hmm. budgeting is really, you know, the practice part uh, of living, especially, you know, financial planning and finance. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah it, it, the, the, the budget's not everything. But it certainly is one of the most important and yet the least used. Most people don't like budgets. <laughs> it's like a dirty word, you know what I mean? But it is so important because it gives us the control that we need. And really, it's a stress reliever. If I can go to the grocery store and I know that I can spend this hundred bucks or whatever it is, or I can, I can, I can go to Amazon and I can, I can make this purchase and I can feel good because I've already decided at the beginning of the month, my budget's 50 bucks. So if I spend 38, totally okay. Right. So it gives you confidence. Stress relief is gone. Um, yeah. Super helpful. Yeah, it's, um, it's funny. I think a lot of people don't deal with budgets because they don't want to face the reality of it. Oh yeah. End of the day, <laughs> you're gonna, you know, you're going to have to face that reality. So you might as well do it um, up front in, in mm -hmm. planning. Like you said, with, with that structure in place, uh, mm -hmm. Knowing exactly what you can and can't do, 
saving well will give you the opportunity to to be able to use those funds in an appropriate way down the road for so, sure you know it's sure. like uh uh they did this study with a bunch of kids and um they said they put a donut on the table i think it was a donut or a cookie and they said you know you can have this cookie now or uh you if you wait you can have two cookies later and the, the kids who ended up waiting for the two cookies, you know, did a lot better over a long term because they were planning and thinking ahead and foresight. So, yeah. you know, I, I think some people are more inclined to that, but mm-hmm. it also all all change and be used used or um, uh, grow in that way, and especially, you know, as, a, as Christians uh, to become, um, you know, more uh, growing our, our faith, growing, sure. you know, in every aspect of life through Christ. So yeah. uh, really great. Uh, any other tips, uh, Sherwin, before we wrap up today? I would say, um, get, 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 get help. If you, mm-hmm. if you feel like you're overwhelmed, like money is just, I mean, you just know it's important, but you just can't wrap your mind ar- around this overwhelming thing. It is, it is totally okay to reach out for, for a help. Um, you know, <laughs> they're, they're, uh, professionals for a reason, allow people to be able to serve you well and help you. Um, you know, obviously someone that you, you are trust, but I, I would not walk the journey alone. Um, I have way too many people that say to me, I wish I had done this 20, 30 years ago. Um, and so I would say it's, it's, it's really important to, to uh, do that because what it does, it's, it sort of like helps you with your blind spots, right? Most of us, we're focused on the road ahead. Can I, can I take care of the kids? Can I do this? Can I do that? That person's going to be able to then help you find the blind spots and just make sure that, that you don't run into, into any trouble. So, um, yeah, that's what I would leave. Um, yeah, that's great advice. You know, people are so focused and busy nowadays. They don't, a lot of times, just don't have the bandwidth to take mm-hmm. the time and learn about 529 plans or 401k plans or things like that. So right. uh, reaching out to uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, like you, Sherwin, sure. to get that advice is uh, get that help and that guidance is a, is a blessing and a good thing to do um, uh, virtually for everyone. So yeah. great. I, I appreciate you being on today. Absolutely, man. Happy to help. Uh, and thanks for, thanks for having me on. Yeah, so at Bucks One Baptist Church, we want to be a blessing to you. We want to help you in any way we can. Uh, so if there's anything we could do for you, uh, help you learn more about God or Christ, or even just um, you have any prayer concerns or counseling needs, we'd be happy to help you out. So please reach out to us. Thanks so much for watching. Mm-hmm.